The Alice Stewart Show is on the air and on your radio right now. Here's more from Alice on 96.5 The Voice. Welcome back to the Alice Stewart Show. 617, it is chilly out there. 24 degrees down in Pine Bluff, 43 in Russellville. So make sure you bundle up and use caution and be careful of ice and sleet out there on the roadways. We've been talking about Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. And as we all recall, as it was promised, it will cost less. It will mean greater choices. You will keep your doctor. You will keep your insurance. And when we get the website up and running, you just log on, click in, and you are good to go. Yet pretty much none of that is the case. And on top of that, a top U.S. hospital that has been one of the poster child hospitals for this administration as the the example of hospitals thriving in the midst of of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, Now the hospital is laying off staff due to regulations with Obamacare. This is the Cleveland Clinic, and this is just yet another victim of Obamacare. Here to talk about that, I'm joined with Patrick Howley. He's a reporter with The Daily Caller. Patrick, good morning. Hi, Alice. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. And you, you yourself and you and your colleagues there at Daily Call are really staying on top of the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, and, and the aftermath. The, uh, I call it the collateral damage of ACA. And the latest one is the Cleveland Clinic and the folks who work there. Yeah, people, uh, I mean, a lot of people don't really realize, uh, you know, what this is doing to hospitals. You know, the Cleveland Clinic is a top four U.S. hospital. It's right up there with the Mayo Clinic. It's one of the top uh, facilities in the country. Um, and uh, they're now forced to uh, go through $330 million in, in fiscal year 2014 in budget cuts. Um, a, a source told me that uh, that was directly related to the Affordable Care Act. When I got on the phone with an executive at the Cleveland Clinic, she would only confirm to me that uh, about $115 million of it was directly uh, a result of the Affordable Care Act. But either way, um, you know, uh, Obamacare is causing layoffs in 2014 at this hospital. Um, and not to mention a, a whole lot of other, um, you know, cost-cutting measures that they have to go through. They have to cut operating room expenses. They have to scale back on vendors. They have to cut uh, contracts with uh, medical supply uh, companies. Um, you know, so this is really affecting every uh, facet of your hospital stay from, you know, uh, getting surgery in the operating room to what kind of equipment you're going to uh, be using to what kind of supplies you're going to have. Um, if you if you uh, check into that hospital, and this isn't just your mom and pop hospital. This is a this is a world renowned hospital. It's a top four U.S. hospital for 2013 14. And and if many recall, back in 2008, uh, surgeons there performed the nation's first near total face transplant. So this is a top notch quality uh, medical facility. And you say you're reporting. Is that at least three hundred thirty million? Yet they're only acknowledging uh, over one hundred. But but e- even that, this is a, a top-notch medical facility that's having major cutbacks as a result of Obamacare, and uh, we don't hear too much about that from the White House. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know um, you know this isn't the only uh, top-notch hospital that's affected at a lot of uh, places, including the Mayo Clinic, for instance. Um, you know, and, and other really. Uh, brand name iconic hospitals. Um, you know, p- patients are, are only going to be um, served by a couple different, uh, insur- one or two different insurance plans on the uh, exchanges beginning in 2014. So the insurance situation when you check into one of these places is being thrown into chaos. Um, and, you know, it just um, affects everything right down the line. Um, you know, if you worked with um, a specialist, uh, you know, a doctor or a nurse that you really liked a couple years ago, um, you come back and, and you still have the same condition a couple years later, you know, that person might have been laid off in the in the meantime, or the um, equipment that uh, they had at that uh, facility might be gone, or, um, you know, something else, uh, you know, you, you won't be able to... Um, uh, the, the wait times will be increased um, if, if you want to go to a uh, specialty, um, you know, wing of the hospital. Um, so, you know, it's hard to even predict what's going to happen in 2014 when a hospital has to cut back, you know, $330 million in budget. Um, that just affects, you know, every single facet of uh, a patient's stay at the facility. And one thing that we're seeing more and more with all aspects of the Affordable Care Act is, is people understood, okay, it's, it costs more. The, the sticker shock associated, once they finally got to healthcare.gov, the sticker shock is one thing. 
The dropped coverage is another. You don't get to keep your doctor or your insurance. Those are all serious, significant problems. But more than anything I see, and you noted this in a, a similar piece yesterday, as people are learning that the president knew that policies would be dropped and knew that they wouldn't be able to keep their doctor, he, he passed this law based on promising if you like your doctor, you could keep it. He made that promise, period. He, he ran on re-election on that promise that you can keep your doctor, period, knowing that it was not true. And now we're seeing similar kind of uh, promises and guarantees broken. And you wrote about this in your story yesterday on immigration, but there is a credibility gap with this president uh, in regard to it yesterday, the immigration, but specifically with Obamacare, there's a tremendous credibility gap. And that is something that I, in my view, will be almost virtually impossible to overcome when it comes to Obamacare. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not just the, the fact that you could keep your doctor that he knew. He knew the tremendous economic consequences this was going to have because unions were telling him uh, that this was going to, I mean, Jimmy Hoffa told him uh, himself that this was going to result in the end of the 40-hour work week and it was going to turn us into a part-time economy. Um, so, you know, as I wrote about yesterday, um, uh, on the issue of immigration, a major day laborer group came out uh, and slammed him, and uh, you know said he has a, a major uh, you know credibility gap on immigration reform. But they're also not happy, um, I hear, because um, you know it's hard to be a day laborer if nobody's willing to hire you to to be a day laborer. Um, so you know if jobs are getting cut, uh, regardless of, of where these unions fall, um, Democrat uh, you know, mostly, um, you know uh, they're still not happy about this because uh, there's less money for them. And moving forward, in terms of 2014, clearly with the president having his own credibility gap, and, and this is something that has been talked about, all, all politics is generally local with these local races. But in my view, 2014, all politics will be national, and that any Democrat running for office, whether it's on the state level, specifically Congress and, and Senate races, they will be tied to the Democratic Party and President Obama. And if he continues to have this credibility problem, which I view that he will, that is going to have a trickle-down effect for all Democrats running for office, specifically here in our state, Senator Mark Pryor, uh, Begich, uh, Landrieu, Hagan, and all the Democrats running for re-election. They will be plagued by Obama's credibility gap. Right, and it's not just because they're Democrats, it's because, you know, the party line uh, forced them all to vote for Obamacare back in 2010 um, and forced them all to uh, use that talking point that was sent out that, that you could keep your doctor. So uh, they're all individually uh, implicated uh, in that lie, uh, not just because um, they're, they're part of the president's party, but because they played ball uh, with that uh, talking point when they were trying to pass the law. Um, so I think that's ultimately what's going to be more damaging for a lot of them. Um, whether or not uh, Obama keeps his majority in the Senate um, remains to be seen. I, I doubt very much that he's going to take the House. Right. Uh, I agree with you there. Uh, it'll, I think it'll be difficult to keep the Senate. I think there's some key Senate Democrats up for re-election, uh, Republicans that will take over some of those seats. And one last question uh, before we go. We've got just a few days for the administration to meet the deadline of November 30th to have healthcare.gov up and running. What do you see as the, the likelihood of that being up and running? I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure. I, I know that there was um, another no-bid contract uh, that was just revealed uh, by new documents uh, the other day. So they're, you know, uh, really uh, trying to get their, their cronies and their friends to, to help them out as much as they can and uh, throw a lot of taxpayer money to try to get this thing moving. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm really not sure. I think people have become so jaded by it that even, at, uh, you know, by November, 30th, if the website is back up and running, I, I don't think they're going to get anything close to um, the kind of enrollment numbers that they originally predicted. All right. Well, we will see. We appreciate your time this morning. Patrick Howley with The Daily Caller. Patrick, thank you so much. Thank you. Alex. All right. Have a great weekend. Thank you.